Inside of the country that pays immigrants $34,000 to leave. This sounds like some European country. You got to get out. Please leave. We will pay you to leave. If you are ready for this, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and type a based in the chat. I need everybody here to type a based in the chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, let's fucking go. Thank you, guys. Here we go. Ready? The country that will pay immigrants 30 this is Sweden, the country that will pay immigrants $34,000 to Whoa. go back home. Why would you even place people to live here? You placed us in one area and then they just put all the bad things on us. We're okay. like the scapegoat. So Sweden has never been like this yeah. uh, blue-eyed, blonde country. Um, yeah, it actually has. Yeah, it has actually, yeah. The idea of a national state is old. We have as many bombings per capita as in Mexico. Oh my God. Two people are dead in a knife attack at an IKEA store in Sweden. Mohammed, you come. Dude, attacking people at an IKEA in Sweden is like attacking people at a McDonald's in America. That's it's like, dude, that is that is sacred ground. You cannot do that. Do it anywhere else. That's so fucked up. <laughs> Sweden began to experience a surge in gang violence, drug trafficking, shootings, grenade explosions, gang rapes, and other violent crimes Why? when 163,000 migrants fled to Sweden during the refugee crisis in 2015. That's not true, man. Like the all all of the Middle Eastern immigrants and African immigrants coming to Sweden had nothing to do with that. Probably, I, what I think is probably the case is that Swedish people. I think Swedish people are probably just crazy and violent. Maybe I don't. I don't know, dude. Fuck, I don't know. From countries like Syria, Afghanistan, and Iraq, leading the Swedish public to wonder if integration was possible and if the benefits of importing uh, third world migrants were worth the diversity and cheap labor they brought. With some Swedish politicians using the rise in crime to argue for less open borders, others fear it may lead to unjust vilification of many peaceful, productive yeah. migrants seeking a better life away from their war torn country. But does multiculturalism work? Does Sweden want more migrants? Are these migrants trying to Sweden was built on diversity. Sweden was built by immigrants. Without immigrants and diversity, there would be no Sweden, okay? To assimilate into Swedish society? And what does it mean to be a Swede in 2024? What are your thoughts on uh, migration? Mm. I think it's a good thing, you know, because uh, some people, like, you know, people from places like, for example, Ukraine or Palestine, like, they need somewhere to go. We have, like, unfortunately, the, like, uh, the government in Sweden is a little bit, like, uh, racist, I think. Okay. <laughs> so, Whoa. Are there any negatives you've observed or heard Yeah, dude, thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, of course, you see all these uh, shootings and stuff like that, but it's... It's what it is. <laughs> it is uh, Sweden what it is. is a very interesting place for multiculturalism. Yeah. I lived here in 2012 and it was very homogenous at that time. I noticed this is my first time back in 12 years yeah. and I noticed that um, it's become a little bit more diverse. I'm not sure necessarily how Swedes feel about that oh. diversity. What specifically uh. do Swedish people gain from the importation of third world migrants? I mean, I work in the healthcare system and I have colleagues coming from all over the world and and we we need those people. So the for the moment birth rates are we need those people, but yeah, mm. going down and we okay. really need to even out the population pyramid. I think Sweden has an obligation to let yeah. people from other places in. Uh, like, let's yeah. say a refugee. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Uh, we at least did have the finances. I think that um, we should be a helpful country. I think okay. it's important to be open, but I also think that we need to take to be responsible to the people that we are welcoming to this country to make them integrate as good as possibly can be done. I think the general idea now in this country is that uh, we want to be more reluctant in letting in too much because we've seen how things can escalate. The remigration concept, yeah. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, I don't think that's going to work. Okay. To be honest. Do you think Why it will not? be effective? Will people go home if offered the sufficient amount? I don't think so. Okay. 
I don't think so. Okay. Dep depends on what country, and, and I mean, it's uh, always a uh, Okay, different so this is where things get a little more nuanced, right? Yeah, exactly. I've heard that they are enacting some new things. They're trying to, with like paying some people to leave. Wow. So, like, let me... Let me try to understand why Sweden is willing to pay $34,000 to get people to leave. The reason why they do this is because they have no idea who is in the country or how many people are in the country. If they if they properly cataloged these people and kept track of them, who they are, date of birth, their name, where they live, whatever, they would be able to deport them if they wanted but they didn't do that, so they can't. Germany also had a colossal failure in this regard. They don't even know how many people came in the country, names, date of birth, whatever, country of origin. And so the reason why Sweden is in a position, okay, we gotta get rid of these people, they are not assimilating, they're causing problems, but we don't know who they are or where they are or where they came from, so we're gonna pay them, we're gonna give them money hoping that they see themselves out, right? kind of like a bait, a little bit of a bait. I don't know, but they, they just, like, they don't have an alternative, really. Um, I think they have lots of room and lots of opportunity to spend their money in better ways. Um, and I think it's already hard with getting, like, a personal number and things here. So I think there's a lot more that can be done for um, immigrants coming to Sweden. Why is diversity good, in your opinion? I think we need skills and confidence from other countries. I also think that we need we do get a lot of benefits from other cultural aspects food what are your thoughts on multiculturalism Yum. here in sweden mm, yeah Yummy. it's like a big melting pot does it work well yeah Sweden is, is now the rape capital of the world. Mmm, but I'm yummy. Yummy food. Mmm. It works, yes. You consider yourself a Swede? No. no. No? Why not? Different culture. I have different culture. What does it mean to be Swedish? Um, in my opinion, Swedish means to, to be open, to be... To be good at uh, Counter-Strike. Interested in internationalism. I think that we should be more welcoming and like trying to get them into the society because exactly. now it's more like they get casted out into these like cities outside the city all right. and they get all like bundled up there. The government are like, oh my god, there's criminality going on. Is there criminality or is that is that myth? It's a big problem. Okay. Yeah, but I think it's because these people don't get like integrated yeah. into society. So they have to do certain things to like survive and get money because the government do doesn't help them. I think you know, there's thousands it. of them coming. Well, sure. five, six, seven, eight years ago. Yeah, that Too was much. Not, yes, of course. Okay. We couldn't take care of them. Sure. Do you think um, these people that are coming to Sweden are trying to integrate or not trying to integrate? Oh, that depends on where, what culture they come from. Okay. Well, you know, in the in the eighties or seventies, there comes a lot of uh, Indians from Africa. Okay. They have been integrated very well. Very well. Uh, first of all, where are you from? I'm from Nigeria. I came to study my Let's PhD, go. Department of Economic History and International Relations. So you've been here for seven years now. About seven years now. Yes. Do you feel Swedish? Uh, not fully yet. I don't speak good Swedish yet. Okay. But the other thing also is that you know the Swedish community is not as open seven as years. many other communities. The access. Okay. Here, here's one thing. I feel like if you move to a country and don't make a concerted effort to speak their language, I I feel like that's fucked up. So an example, my wife is German. We live in the US. If we ever decided to move to Germany, it would be like my number one top priority every single day, one or two hours per day, concerted effort, I'm learning German. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna live in Germany, whatever, with my German wife and our kids, I am learning this language. It's gotta happen as fast as possible. Sometimes it's not there. You have friends that you come to maybe meet at workplace or in school and things like that. But I don't think it goes beyond that in most cases. The bond is not usually there like that. Do you think as an outsider it's tougher to uh, integrate here? I think so. What are your thoughts on uh, immigrants coming to Sweden? Good I, or bad thing? I really like it. Okay. My wife's from Colombia. Okay. Yeah. 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 Dude. This guy looks like the Swedish meme. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Can I, oh dude, can I find this? Uh, old textbook Swedish man. 
Dude, I can't find the image. Do you guys know the one I'm talking about? Uh, fuck. <sighs> There's like some old textbook from like 1840 and it has a picture of a Swedish guy. Any, anyway, it's it like became kind of a meme. Swedish man meme. I can't do it. I can't find it. Fuck. You know that feeling when you have the perfect meme for the situation and you can't find it? Oh my God. I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead. I would rather be dead than have to live the shame of not having the proper meme. I'd rather be dead. Uh, multiculturalism has made Sweden a better Shit. place compared to what it was like when I was growing up. So... Okay. Yeah. I'm all in favor. Do you think cool. multiculturalism here in Sweden Rebels. works? Yeah, this is a very tough question because it has pros and cons. I have seen so many people that think that multiculturalism is diluting you know, the Swedish culture. However, what I know as somebody that is a researcher is that culture is not static. Culture is dynamic. There are some things that even in Sweden, that Swedish people used to do 50 years ago that when people do now, they will consider to be appalling. Sure, sure. And this is what it is. Things are always changing. Multiculturalism yeah. has True. some advantages in that. For example, someone like me that is that came for a PhD, yeah. I will consider myself to be an expert at least in my field yeah. and that is an addition I what to field is. Sweden and yeah. there are so many that will bring their experiences. What is his field? I wonder what he's an expert in. Very smart people that can contribute to the system. At the same time, you have people that constitute nuisance within the system. These sort of people are not limited to the migrant community because you find very uh, people with misdemeanor, so to speak. We our lives are so integrated with other countries, so I think small okay. countries uh, especially are really depending on migration. So I th Is it currently working? Not as good as I think it can. It can do. Okay. It's developed the society, I think. Yeah, the, the current problem with immigration right now is that we don't have enough immigration. To learn from different cultures. I think if we have, we have more, a lot it'll be to better. thank multicultural for actually like the food cultural uh, it gives uh, job opportunities right. yeah i love multi multicultural right. uh, yeah i think it works and uh, i love that i will i'll make a compromise i will never eat mexican food ever again for the rest of my life if it means that we can have a secure southern border i'm willing to make the trade and by the way yeah i, I like chipotle man i like to have a burrito a burrito bowl yeah i mean i like it but i'm willing to make the compromise i will make the deal if the deal can be made, I'll do it. Diversity. Okay. I mean, I mean, the whole Swedish culture is based on immigration and migration from other countries and so forth. Yeah. Um, and if I were to move here to Sweden, could I become Swedish? Yeah, I'd say so. You think yeah, so? yeah, yeah. All right. If I but the thing is, Stop. is that's this guy is telling this guy that he can become. Just because you're American. If you were from another country, or you wouldn't be welcome. But since you're American or highly educated, what are you talking no, about? no, that's what. No, that's, so if I came from Somalia, would I be welcomed? <laughs> <laughs> if you were to be Somali, All right. uh, they would put you in like uh, the the ghetto, okay. uh, and, and again, they would put me there, or I would move yeah, there you, because you would move there. Okay. And and since the financial issue in Sweden, uh, like it's not very good right now, uh, you would have to learn Swedish, and then the society would look down upon you, or would look down on I you. See. So you have the marginalization. Uh, yes. And then... Um... And you think it's something? No, I agree. Uh, I understand okay. where he's coming from. Uh, and definitely there is an issue right. in, in, in Sweden that we have to work on. The gun violence. I'm happy you're talking yeah. about this because... It's something that needs to be said. Okay. It's important uh, it's to, to get light on, yeah. Yes. But it's easy to look at Sweden. Oh, such a beautiful country. It's very pretty. Uh, it is. Um, I love Sweden. Uh, but, but I mean, you can tell I'm not typical Swedish, uh, but I yeah. feel I fit in. Okay. It's it's about how you how you grow up. Can we get a dance before we leave? Can, you, can we see you guys? There we go. There we go. The wonders yeah. of multiculturalism. So I headed Whoa, to Rinkaby, the infamous no-go zone. 
Do not go to Rinkaby, you will die. Home, where the 60 Minutes camera crew got attacked and this guy fought back in his wheelchair. With 91% of Rinkaby's population immigrants as of 2018, it's a symbol of the parallel societies in Sweden where migrants seem to live in an entirely different world than the rest of their Swedish neighbors, That's and right. some say it represents the problems that arise when migrants do not properly integrate into Swedish society. But real quick, did you know 2.9 billion records were stolen from national public data a few months ago? Billion. What? Oh. We're talking names, birthdays, phone numbers, addresses, and most alarmingly, social security. I can't believe that, dude. It pisses me off. We got some people out here. Excuse me. Question for you. Oh, yeah. Where are you from? Where, where are you from? Oh, you really think you're me? Uh, you from Sweden? No. Uh, where are you from? Oh, you can't test. Uh, country? Oh. You can't test when it's brother. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh. Okay. We got a shop right here. Okay. We're basically in a um, little Middle okay. Eastern community, it seems like. All right, so rumor has it we're in a no-go zone. Obviously, we've gone. The question is, will we go back home in one piece? Where are they from? Why did they come here? How is life? Let's go find out. Uh, how long have you lived in Rinkaby? For about a year. Okay. Where are you from originally? I'm from sure. Syria. Okay. But I, I have lived in Risne, which is very close to here. So, yeah. Okay, so you're born and raised here in Sweden? No. I, I came here in 2015, so... From Syria? Yeah. So how's your experience been in Sweden um, as a Syrian? Well, it was fine. Uh, I grew up here, so it feels like natural, natural being... Unironically, Norway, Denmark, and Finland are having issues with gangs because the migrants from Sweden are expanding their operations. You know what? Um, I think that probably Norway, Denmark, and Finland probably just need more immigrants. Like, like... Those gangs are only expanding as a consequence of negative socioeconomic circumstances and institutionalized racist structures. And so if you had more immigrants in those countries, then uh, then they wouldn't need to commit that type of crime or violence. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Sweet, from Sweden? Yeah. Or, yeah. I was young, so okay. I don't really know that. I didn't have that like tough experience or so. But yeah, it's a nice place, actually. Before I moved here, I heard that it was like... Like the hood, right? Yeah, exa yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, I wouldn't say that. Okay. I, I like Rinkeby, actually. Because they call it a no-go zone. Is that accurate? I mean, no, we're no, here, no, right? Absolutely not. No. I, I go to the gym like at 10 o'clock at night. Okay. It's fine. It, as long as you're not involved in the gangs and so on, you're the fine, gangs? I would say. Is this... Wait, wait, so wait, slow down. Wait, 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 slow down. As long as you're not involved in the gangs. Wait, what gangs? That's a problem. It's a sort of parallel society, as they call it. Different world within a world sort of thing. They want it to be like that. Actually, the Swedes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say they act like, they, no, no, we want you to be involved okay. and be a part of the society. But why would you even place people to live here? You placed us in one like area and then they just put all the um, bad things on us. We are okay. like the scapegoat. Basically, we sell the drugs, they buy them. Sure. But if they wouldn't buy, we wouldn't sell. So, so let me ask you this. Do people have economic opportunity huh? outside of some of this uh, criminality, like the drug selling, or are young men kind of just like, okay, I guess I'll go sell drugs? Well, uh, Sweden have a free edu education. You can become a doctor and, not, and you get money from CSN, okay. for example, for studying. I get 4,000 crowns for every going month. to become a doctor? Yeah, okay, every smart. month. So it's like $400. You get money to Paid study. To study. Exactly. Exactly. Why, why are people getting involved in gangs then? Well, I think that they they have a different background. People from like war and some and things like that. Sure. And many kids grow up here with no passion. Schools doesn't have any type of like good uh, education that discipline kids. They don't have that. Why come? So when she, when he asks the question, why are some of these immigrants get d despite being given free money every month? Why are they getting into dealing drugs? and joining gangs, her response is to blame the Swedish public school system. Her response, oh, well, that's Sweden's fault. That's their education uh, system's fault. Come to Sweden if um, if the Swedens aren't, uh, let's say, welcoming and... Um... Because, well, our countries, yeah. um, people are suffering there. As you see now in Gaza, yeah. people are dying, basically. That makes sense. I guess my question is why Sweden specifically and not maybe yes. a neighboring like UAE or well, a Middle Eastern country? I would say because the UAE and so on, they didn't open doors, okay. actually. They are Muslim countries sure. and they are our people somehow, sure. but they didn't open their doors. It was Sweden sure, uh, and Germany. Um, where are you much. from originally? I am from Palestine. 
Tell us it. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you like Sweden? Yeah. Good. Are they welcoming to refugees? Uh, yeah. I am I'm drive bus. You drive bus? Yeah. And you've been here for how long? Uh, 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Oh, wow. Do you plan on staying in Sweden forever? Uh, no, not now. Not this, uh, not because the new politic. This is a. Oh, the new politics are bad? This is different. Uh, how so? Uh, bad? Yeah. Uh, in what ways? Everything. How so? Economy. Immigration? Yeah. How they treat you? Not for me. Okay. I have uh, Medbori. I have okay, pass. So you're in. I'm from Sweden, Serbia, and Peru. Okay, are you born and raised here in Sweden? Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on Rinkeby? My thoughts in that sense. I don't know, it's a beautiful place in some senses, but I think every place has its problems. Okay. What are some of the good things about this place? What are some of the bad things? Things I would say like it's very common for people to... Dude, it is nuts to say, well, every place has problems when you're hand-waving gang crime, drug dealing, and like <laughs> mass rapes. Well, eh, every place has its problems. We really get to know each other. It's very family, like we normally accept people from other places. I think many people have bad thoughts about this place. Yes, because it's a place where maybe it's very mixed with the cultures. And I think people normally have the tendency to really uh, give this place a shot, like a really good chance. And I think pe if people would do that, it would get along with people living here. I think people already have racist thoughts about this place. I think that we are involved in Oh, you know what? Hold up, dude, Bone. Dude, Bone got me. Okay, tell me. Does this portrayal of a Swedish man not look that not look like that guy we saw earlier? This is the image I was looking for. Bro, it looks like him. It looks just like that one guy. It's nuts. That's the image I was trying to find. Damn, good job. In the society, many Syrians educate and go to universities and so on. So yeah. I'm not saying that the immigrants is very like not doing bad things. Sure. They are and they maybe they aren't like following the rules and so on. But the government could do better. What, what's one change you'd like to see in the government? Don't spread propaganda on social media okay. about us immigrants being the like uh, the people who kill and so on. Because when it's a, a Swedish a Swedish man who who like commits a rape, they said a man. Yeah. When it's a black man, they would uh, put his name or something that shows you that he is not sweet. I think it's actually the exact opposite of that. That situation, I think it's the exact opposite. From Sweden, so, yeah. but I don't think that we are committing more crimes than Swedes because they do commit crimes, but they, they the media doesn't show. Why are the she thinks they are not committing more crimes than Swedes. Hmm. Hmm. That's a curious idea. So many shootings here. Gang crimes. Yeah. Why do people, from from your understanding or speculation, get involved in gangs out here? I would say the main reason maybe you cannot pay your bills. I don't think everyone chooses to do these things. And also, I'd be like, go on down the road, you fuck. <laughs> If you want to support our boots on the ground, independent journalism that is not bought and paid for by corporate interests, along with exclusive DLC content that YouTube won't let me up, and uncensored shit. early access to all my videos before they go up on YouTube, go subscribe at patreon.com slash Tyler Oliveira for less than five bucks a month. Let's go. A lot of heterogeneous cultures here. We have kokab, East African products, uh, Thai, sushi. So we're in Rinkaby. And here we are. This is what the famous spot where the wheelchair guy drove into the dude attacking the boom mic operator. So we're noticing, just do a pan, you know, every walk of life we're seeing. So we got a cool ethnic market here. We got Palestine Cola. This is a truly a melting pot we're witnessing. This reminds me of New York in a lot of ways. And last but not least, the Islamic Cultural Center. We're in front of the police station of Rinkabee. Cool. Can you tell me some of the problems and difficulties they face building this place? Yeah, so when they started building this place a couple of years ago, uh, the construction workers got attacked and they had a, like, a really hard time also getting the stuff here because of like roadblocks and stuff. So uh, Who were they getting attacked by? Like local gangs okay. and gang members. That didn't yeah. want a police station right in the heart of Rinkabee? Yeah. Uh, for obvious reasons? Yeah, for obvious <laughs> reasons, you know. At some point, you wow. perhaps also could understand that from a criminal point of view, you know, having a, a police station like this, also quite big, you could understand that, of course. On this building, uh, you have like fireproof walls from the outside as yeah. well to not like... Dude. Oh my god, yeah, he's right. Holy shit. Damn, they, they beefed the fuck. I bet, I bet the windows are thicker than normal too. God damn. Walls from the outside as yeah. well to not like be able to throw Molotov cocktails and stuff. That's fireproof, bulletproof, bulletproof. drive-proof. Yeah. 
Why? Because we are in Rinkeby and <laughs> this is a fortress we're looking at right here. Uh, yeah. So what they also That's do right. is they like escort police from here and yeah. to work. So for example, if you're a local policeman here and you arrest someone here at the uh, the center. Oh, then, then you go, go back here, change uniform, and you know, walk to the subway station with police guards. Yeah, exactly. So the police themselves are afraid of getting attacked after they do their job and arrest people here. Yeah, and that's why they got that from here. But I wanted to hear Fuck. from an immigrant who. Dude, that's a cool looking gun. Hold up, dude, that gun is sick. Where was that? People here. Yeah, and that's why they got that from here. But I. Dude, that gun looks fucking badass. Holy shit. Wanted to hear from an immigrant who moved wow. to Sweden when she was 20 and became the first black police officer in Sweden. Is integration possible? And why are so many migrant youth turning to a life of crime? And we're in a big yeah, police why? compound. This place is fortified. Why is that? I mean, it starts with like for maybe 10 years ago, we, we have community policing and we have small stations. And then uh, one day someone threw a hand grenade uh, on the building and then the, the, the politician decided that we should. How, how are they getting hand grenades? How do, how do you just have a fucking hand? What are you playing Counter-Strike? You, you buy, it's like part of your fucking loadout or what? Should be a huge police station that will be in Rinkeby. If I, I became police officer 2006, right? Eco so round, between 2006 round, to 2000. 15, no, or 40. Eco everything round, was only. You know, cool here. Sure. You have more or less small crimes like, uh, I don't know, uh, burglary and uh, theft, okay. you know, those small things. After 2015, then we start the gang violence in Sweden. And then we have certain group who start to uh, build kind of gang, uh, what they call themselves. Sure. We are having shooting before in Södertälje, where we have immigrants from Middle East, but Christian immigrants from Middle East, okay. who also build them s their own, you know, uh, kind of gang. It's more like mafia. I mean, okay. um, burning cars, you know, like uh, shooting, uh, throwing a stone on the police officers. But now, from 2021 up to now, everything's quiet here because we were not like sitting down and watching them we you know what i mean okay. that's from 2015. okay yeah during the refugee crisis yeah that's most of the people say that it's because of refugees but i can say because most of the people who Three are hours in the gang long. valley most of wow. them born here in sweden here's the problem sound i am not going to be here tomorrow or the next day my next stream is going to be monday so I'm I'm like I'm gonna be late to the Trump thing. You guys, a lot of you guys might even watch it without me. I hope I hope not, but I'm not gonna be able to watch with you guys until Monday. I hate to say, it feels bad. Okay. And they became they came to Sweden for many years ago. They are not like the new migrant. So these are second gen uh, children of immigrants. Yeah. Of okay. course, of course. Yeah. Those youth, they have to feel that they're part of this society. They are Swedish too. You you cannot give a, a person identity at the same time, making the person feeling that you're not a part of this society because you look different. In living in an area when most of them are immigrants, how can you be a part of the society if you don't know the rules, you don't know the culture, you're not learning anything? If I were a kid and if I were to throw a grenade into this room, for instance, what could you do as a police officer? And then how would the court system take me in as, let's say, a 13-year-old? I'm a 13-year-old. I mean, <laughs> nothing would happen. Nothing would happen? No. You would take me into custody and yeah, I... We don't want to take you to custody. We'll take you in the... I mean, the, the social will take over the, the whole investigation. A young man in a kind of... Uh, how do you call it? Who be him? Or is kind of... Um, it's not really... Uh, jail, but it's more like a place where they get educated or... If, even if I were to throw a grenade yeah, yeah, at a police yeah, officer? That's the, that's, the just, that's the system in Sweden. I say that they should throw them to jail and they have Jesus. to learn. If you throw a hand grenade, you can get 10 years old. Or if they caught you with the arm... You have to learn. Hey, no throwing hand grenades. In Sweden, that is not allowed. That is against the rules. Can 10 years old, if you sit down there, you're gonna start to think at the same time, the government have to prepare that what's happening in Sweden is like, they throw you to in, in the I prison. And then after when you get out, you don't have anything to go. Where do you go? You go back to your friends. Sure, and then you throw another hand grenade exactly. or shoot someone else. Oh, because your parents are from another country, you have to learn Swedish too. Why Swedish too? Why don't, why don't I study Swedish as my, my, my Swedish? Okay. Swedish is taking these young children who are born here yeah. to 
to learn Swedish as their second language. Exactly. And they're born in Sweden. Yes. But they're never going to truly feel Swedish. Exactly. They tried okay. to do that with me. My, my father came to the school and said, hey, what? Can, let's say an immigrant is coming here to Sweden right now, can they become Swedish? Can they integrate into of society? Yes, they can if you make it easy for them, give them the tools, make it easy for them, let their parents to be parents. They have to also to tell us immigrant coming here, okay, if you come to my country, this is the law. No one is telling you. Everyone is going to the suburb. How do we know about what, what we have to sure. do? You have to tell me. This is the law. We want you to follow it. Now they are. I don't, I don't know how you can be so, like, dude. Okay, I'm an American guy. I'm 30 years old. My wife is German. My kids are half German. My in-laws are all German. If we, if we moved to Germany and I spent the next 50 years of my life living in Germany and I learned the language and I became uh, linguistically proficient and I really, really like did my best, I would understand still, despite all of these things, I'm never going to be 100% German. I'm never I'm never going to be 100% the same as everybody else, all the all the other German guys. It's it's never going to happen. Even if I dedicated 50 years to doing it, it's just it's not going to happen, right? And you can do your best and sure you should, but still, you're not you're they not ever going to do that. 100%. Even they're still saying that, but they're not telling what to do either. They have to be proud themselves about their own culture before they can introduce that culture to me. If they don't know about the, the culture themselves, how can they introduce the culture to me as a foreigner? How, they have to know who they are first before they tell us who we are. Or who they want you to be. Who they want us to be. As the Swedish, what's the Swedish culture? They will say, yeah, stand openness. In, openness, standing in a queue. You go to, <laughs> that's not a culture. You, you, they can't define their own culture. The segregation in this country is what you're seeing in many different places like this. Uh, we were just visiting like uh, central Stockholm the other day, and there you saw a whole other picture. Totally different. Totally different. This is entirely Middle Eastern and African people yeah. in Sweden. Yeah, because you guys let them in and you guys welcome them. Yeah, we had the prime ministers talking on national television to open our hearts and to be like accepting. Sure, so, and you did. Yeah, for almost uh, 40 years, perhaps. And now you're paying some of these people 34,000 USD to go back? Is that the idea? Uh, yeah, the current government uh, has. What side you fight on when you migrate to Germany and America invades? Well, I am, I am never moving out of America. I'm staying in America. We, of course, we visit Germany. We love Germany. Okay. But we're never, we're never going to live in Germany. In fact, this is kind of a curious topic. Let's, let's look at the next 50 years. We're talking about, we're, the, we're theory, theorizing about World War Three or, you know, national strife, whatever, drama, bad politics, whatever. What like where, like where do you think it's safest to be? Like, do you think it's over the next fifty years? Do you think it's better to be in America, or do you think it's better to be in France or Sweden or or Germany or whatever? I think I think Australia, yeah, maybe. But no, let's let's keep it focused on on Europe and America. I th I think like I I I, I bet in. In, are, are we are we gonna have 50, 50 years of peace of peacetime? I don't think so. I wouldn't bet on that. Like I I think in the next fifty years there will be something really bad that happens probably. And if 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 that if that is the case, I think there are probably pr places in America where you would want like you'd want to be in Montana or something. You know what I mean? You'd want to be. I don't know. Kind of just like like out of, out of the way. You want to be out of the way, probably. I don't know. It's hard. It's really. It's like it's it's not hard to predict. It's fucking impossible to predict, right? It's in post, like a Poland, bro. Listen, when listen, hey, when shit gets crazy, Poland is always the one place that like you don't want to be. That's the one place we gotta listen. We gotta get the fuck out of Poland. We're leaving Poland. <laughs> Poland is pretty based. We like Poland. Poland is based. It's awesome. Poland has, and it's not even Poland's fault. They just have a, they're kind of in a difficult position, like geographically. Like if you look at a map, they're always kind of in a difficult position. They've got these guys over there and those guys over there. Yeah, you want to be in Siberia. Siberia is probably a good spot to be, true. An amount of money to return back. Well, it true. got quite big in Sweden uh, with multiple headlines of uh, a full plane going back to Iraq. 
After hearing from Risa, I met up with Marcus, the chairman of the Conservative Student Union at University of Stockholm, Bilan okay. Osman, a Muslim activist, journalist, and second-gen Somalian immigrant, and Arvi, a spokesman from a conservative think tank, Oikos, to see yeah. if they too thought it was the government's fault that migrant youth are struggling to integrate. Sweden has always had minorities. Sweden portrays itself as a, uh, how do you say it, like homogeneous uh, okay. country, where uh, everyone is like white and blonde and so on. But there has been minorities in Sweden for uh, like centuries. So Sweden has never been like this uh, blue, white, blonde country. But in Like the 1930s, we had a lot of migration mainly because of war. The last decades, uh, because of the of the wars. But in the beginning of the 90s, Sweden became a kind of racist country. We funded the Race Biology Institute, uh, where you measured people's heads and uh, even sterilized minorities. Are the people themselves trying to integrate themselves into society? Where's the disconnect? Yeah, well, of, of course, a lot of a lot of them actually are integrating society. Yeah. That that would be a, a righteous to say. But um, and the government is trying, but they have to, for a long time tried to just throw money at money at these places. But for some reason, they they are not being able to integrate anyways. Um, Why so, is that? Yeah, I don't think they want to integrate. I think that's the answer. They came to Sweden for the economical uh, incentives. They not didn't came come here to become Swedes. So I think a lot of people, their own background is uh, quite, quite solid. They want mm. to keep that as well. For example, something mm. obvious these days that we cannot take in mm. infinite of number of p new people from a different culture, right? You have to have this integration assimilation process. That was highly controversial in Sweden for like 15 years ago. So we're having this uh, political thinking, uh, which is not controversial at all, really, uh, in the parliament already through the Swedish Democrats and stuff. And they're not uh, far right, alt right people at all. Everyone is concerned about the criminality that's. So do we have any Swedes here or any Europeans that maybe know more or just anyone, I guess, that knows about this? What 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 is the most conservative political group in Sweden? Is it the Swedish Democrats? Like it, like what, what, what is the group that is the most anti-immigrant? Swedish Democrats, Swedish Democrats. Okay, coming up through okay. second and first generation migrants, um, so everyone is very concerned. And well, in a way, we're trying to re rediscover what what Swedish conservatism is. One can say, at least, that uh, what has really rejuvenated Swedish conservatism, the impulse which has made it relevant again, is an opposition to uncontrolled immigration, which has been the, the dominant political issue in Sweden for now at least 15 years. There are many different kinds of negative effects of uncontrolled third world mass immigration. One obvious is crime. Uh, Today we have a gangsterism in Sweden like interwar Chicago. We have as many bombings per capita as in Mexico. So, and, and Sweden used to be a very, very safe country. There's a bunch of studies about this. If you, uh, if you're named like Mohammed, let's say, yeah, Fatima or Mohammed, uh, then you have the lesser chance to get a job or okay. uh, uh, get a buy a house. Right? That doesn't mean that because your name is Fatima Mohammed, your life will suck. But there's been a lot of studies when it comes to the racist culture in, in Sweden. We have a tendency to not acknowledge that racism exists in Sweden because of you said that Sweden has always been welcoming towards refugees and sure. that's kind of true in, in some sense. I think that that has also been like an uh, excuse to not acknowledge the racist society that we live in. The Swedish media was... It's never enough. It is never enough. That if you oppose immigration on enough. any ground, that means you're a racist. Even if you said that there might be some potential downside, you're a racist. Swedish public debate is like a school of fish, right? Okay. So everyone changes position at the same time. So, so n now everyone is kind of opposed to this. But up until 2015, this was, and that's why the Sweden Democrats grew so much. They had a monopoly on saying that immigration could possibly be a bad thing. Now you have like five parties to say that bad or, you know, not too good. So there's far more competition in that way. Uh, I saw some, some data from The Economist today. This was not from Sweden, but from Denmark. But 
should be pretty much the same. Where they had looked at the fiscal effects of immigration from different parts of the world. But the average effect on, on an from an immigrant from the Middle East and North Africa was that they were a fiscal burden throughout their life. Even, and this is important, even in their prime working age. Ooh. Do you think migrants from Muslim countries are integrating yeah. well into Sweden? And is Sweden helping them integrate into Sweden? I actually, I'm, I'm kind of allergic to the integration. Tell me why. The, the only way to adapt to a society is that you get the chance to have a job, to have good education. That for me is like integration. But in the Swedish society, we are more talking about assimilation, that people that are coming to Sweden has to change the way they are. And that's problematic. People don't have to have one identity. They can have multiple. Like a couple days ago, we had a, it was a debate in Sweden between the party leaders and the leader for the Christ Democrats said that Islam doesn't always adapt to Swedish values. Uh, what does that mean? I'm a Swedish Muslim. Uh, in which way is there a conflict between Islam and, and Sweden? Uh, that's a false narrative and that's the problem with like the society. Do you think some of the yeah. laws or precepts in the Quran and the, the precepts of Islam conflict with Swedish society and Swedish law? First of all, uh, if you look at the world population, one fourth is is Muslims. The way someone see Islam in Afghanistan or in Somalia or in Iran or in Sweden is obviously different. We have a lots of different interpretations of what Islam is. I don't believe in the concept that Islam is one thing that has a conflict with Western values. So Swedes have, I think, a yeah, much so harder true, true, way true, true. grappling with and understanding That's Islam true. than people would do having in the US or in Poland where people actually still believe in God. For, for Swedes, Islam is just some superficial thing. It's like, yeah, you know, don't they don't drink alcohol. But maybe there are Swedes who don't drink alcohol either. The fact that people okay. would, would actually care deeply about religion is uh, an alien idea to many Swedes. People didn't imagine at all yeah. that, that we would have a large number of mosques in Sweden or maybe it would be a temporary thing because Muslims should stop being Muslims because why would they be Muslims? So the expectation was these Muslim migrants would leave their religion behind and become truly Swedish. Yeah, That's I imagine right. so. Okay. So for example, happen. we have a big issue in Sweden with rapes, sex, uh, sexual uh, assaults, and they are coming from first generation migrants. But we also have a uh, having a big issue with gang criminals, which is completely unique for Sweden. We haven't had that before. And that, that is a result of the second generation of migrants not integrating in Swedish society. So why do you think um, second generation? Well, here, I, I think maybe we need to consider that gang violence might might be good for Sweden. Like it might actually make Sweden better. Non-ethnically Swedish youth are uh, becoming members of gangs and committing mm. crimes disproportionately. There's individual factors uh, when it comes to mental health or that you, uh, many of them have ADHD or have had trouble. Bro. <laughs> like, why do this? Why are you, why are they doing this? What the fuck, what is the point of this? In school, that doesn't mean that everyone that come from like, uh, like a single household or from a poor sure. environment or have ADHD uh, will go into gang violence. But we have a huge problem. I think it's, so for example, they are growing up in an environment which is not, there are no incentives to get involved in the majority society and they're living in these clusters with people from their own culture, right? So they feel not feeling that they are belonging, belonging to the Swedish uh, society, therefore they are uh, gro having a growing uh, re resentment to the Swedish culture. Yeah. Why is it one specific group acting uh, disproportionately in a certain manner? So that's why the question in itself doesn't help. So if we're talking about how can social services be better in having contact with the schools that young children are, sure. that's a solution. Okay. Or how can like the law informants, uh, how can they have a better communication with social services and schools. Okay. That's a solution. Yeah. yeah, so 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 everything is the problem of Sweden society, Sweden program, Sweden education system, everything is everybody else's problem. Okay. We have already 100 yeah. years ago agreed as an international community that there are not different races. You are not born with some kind of 100 years ago we agreed 
that there are no different races. I feel like I feel like a hundred years ago, probably. This is not nineteen twenty four. I think people were actually pretty racist at that point. Hundred years ago, I think people were pretty fucking racist. Qualities that is in line with your skin color or your religion and so on. Uh, we don't have any most impact when it comes to gang violence. It's that non-white people in the suburban places where those kind of uh, shootings are sure. going on, uh, they are the biggest victims. So they're in killing each other? It's not killing each other. It's it's like... Who, who's it's killing them? Criminals that are attacking people in our society. Who uh, are these criminals predominantly? I don't know. I don't have any kind of statistics. Dude, this is nuts. This is... This is... Hold up. I just, I just have to, to hold up here. I'm sorry. I just... Dude. Oh my god. Dude, it's crazy. Dude, it's crazy. Dude, it's just, oh, dude, what? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Whoa. To say that. Gangs. Uh, these are, I wouldn't say 100% immigrants or the children of immigrants, but maybe 95, 99, 98%, something like that. Now, this doesn't mean that indigenous Swedes never commit any crimes at all. They certainly sure. do. Many crimes, especially violent crime, sexual crime, there is a, a very strong overrepresentation among uh, certain immigrant groups. I would say that people who commit less crimes are, for example, uh, Vietnamese immigrants, Southeast Asian ones, Thai, certainly Japanese, yep. uh, Chinese. While you have very strong overrepresentation, when we're talking about groups from Middle East, North Africa, Africa. 25 years, so it's come up, we've had I, about 2 million immigrants yep. come to Sweden. If these had been 2 million Norwegians, we wouldn't have this discussion today. Do you think Whoa. Sweden has an obligation to help refugees? Sweden actually has that, because after the Second World War, uh, a lot of countries decided to adapt to the uh, United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. Uh, and one of those human rights is that every person and every human human being has a value and every human being has the right to seek uh, asylum yeah. and nothing has changed so but the only thing that has changed in Europe is Marauders. that we are heading to more and more fascist and nationalists kind of politics in, sure. in Europe uh, but the question is why do they go through like 15 countries to come to Sweden that's my question yeah, yeah. exactly so is that, or both? Uh, I think there are they there are huge economical incentives to come here to Sweden obviously uh, but they can do that dude I just like I just cannot fathom traveling thousands and thousands and thousands of miles to get to some place skipping over a ton of other places on the way and then getting to that place and i am given resources and housing and living stipends and classes to help integrate and language courses and then just complaining about every every single aspect of that place that i have that i have went to like it, dude. It like it. Ju it just like it just blow. It blows my mind. It blows my fucking mind. Through I, the asyl process as well. This idea from the '60s, right? Like we should have a lot of foreign aid. We should care about the third world, but we should care about Nicaragua and we should care about uh, Somalia and we should care, you know, all these countries far away. Why? Well, because that was virtuous. They they used to say that Sweden is a humanitarian superpower. And, and there was this idea that, you know, Sweden after World War II, Sweden together with Switzerland and the US, Sweden was the richest country in the world. And we had this idea, this feeling that we're actually better than other people. We're rich, we're the best. We have the most progressive, most modern society. Why would Sweden feel that way when everybody knows that America's the best? That's, man, that's awkward for them. We're the model for the world. The fact yeah. that we were rich because we had stayed out of World War II uh, and didn't have our industries bombed into dust and could profit from rebuilding all the rest of Europe. Yeah, you know, people didn't want to think about it. Sweden, like, stayed out of World War II. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't. They were a little bit, they were a little bit involved. They had a little bit of involvement. About that part. 
But this meant that we were the best and most virtuous people in the world. The model for the world, everyone should be like us. We, we, we got this idea that Swedishness is not a particular culture. It's not mm. having a common history, a specific language or anything like that. No, it is. It means being modern. And the, Sweden was the most modern country in the world. And if you immigrate to Sweden from another country, as soon as you pass the border, you cross mm. the border, you become Swedish, right? The idea of a national nope. state is nope. old. The national okay. state and the idea doesn't work anymore. Uh, of course, Sweden is multi-culture. Sweden go. works. I don't see any bombs. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Of course, yep. multi-culture is the only way that the world works I people that are that are nationalists I, I think that they are most more like nostalgic and thinking about a time that doesn't exist and haven't existed in a long time their premise people are thinking on that everyone wants to become swedes right and when swedish people meet other people from different cultures they realize that they want don't they don't want the influence except for food or whatever it's a okay. joke in Sweden um, yeah so Swedish people don't want that at all and not even the one who actually say uh, believes that they Refugees want to either not. they are living on Södermalm here south of Stockholm where everyone is Swedes already hanging out with his Swedish people, friends going to Swedish bars are and you seeing like Swedish white flight moving out of neighborhoods that are being um, uh, flooded with new yeah. migrants. Is that yeah, what's we, happening? We have Swedish fly, uh, white flight uh, areas in Sweden. Okay. Yeah, definitely. If I moved here, would you consider me no. a Swede after a few years of integration? No, no, uh, you are not a Swede. Okay. Uh, but man, that's also all right. You don't have to be a Swede, right? It's no, it's not mandatory to be a Swede. If you someone just would get offended by you saying that, is my guess. So, yeah, maybe, but I, I don't care. <laughs> what are your hopes for Swede? I mean, likewise, if I if I moved to Sweden and I lived there for 50 years, I would also never be a Swede. I would never become a Swede. Sweden in the next 20 years. I want it to be more of the Sweden that I love. Sometimes I miss my own home country. <laughs> uh, that is Sweden? Yeah, okay. like I, I have felt like, especially the last 20 years, I would say, uh, we have had an increase when it comes to hate crimes, uh, when it comes to the impact of the right wing movement has had. I want it to be the democratic country that I know Sweden is and there's a whole anti-racist movement here. There are a lot of anti-fascists and this is my comrades and I will keep on uh, hoping that we will win. So there's an American saying if you find yourself in a hole the first thing you do is stop digging. Right? The current right-wing government is very anti-immigrant. Right? The main force of the Swedish left, the Social Democrats, they're moving in that direction as well. And they're surrounded by a large native population, they will be absorbed somehow. But if the immigrants become too many, then they might very well stay unassimilated in their own communities. And they're the majority. Yeah, in, 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 in certain areas, in certain communities, they're definitely the majority, especially because of segregation. There is one important thing, and that is the changes we see in Swedish politics today. They are the biggest changes in Swedish politics for a century. They are the biggest changes in our political structure since Sweden became a full democracy. I'm quite optimistic for the future in Sweden, but it will take a long time. Okay. You have to come back in 10, 15 years and ask me again. Yeah. And it's remigration a part of this. Can I tell you something? Have you guys seen this movie Midsummer set in Sweden? It's like a Swedish cult. It's supposed to be super scary. It's like a, it's like a scary movie, Midsummer. I remember I remember I saw that movie and I was like, dude, this is awesome. Dude. Dude, I would I would totally I would totally join this cult. This cult is awesome. This is badass, man. Sign me up. This is a great cult. I totally want to join that cult. Solution in your opinion. <laughs> yeah, it will be. Yeah. Uh, firstly, this with, with economical incentives, but then we'll be forced also. I'm pretty sure with, about that. When I talk to uh, foreign conservative friends about the changes in Sweden, they often believe this because it's one thing when you have the right ruling in Poland or in the US or, or uh, in Slovenia. Sure. It's Based. something else entirely when Sweden, the supposed progressive socialist paradise, turns to the right or even the hard right. Then people really say, wait, what's going on? Is Sweden perhaps a canary in the uh, coal mine? As the world continues to globalize uh, and wealthy is. nations yeah, import third world migrants for cheap labor to support their lowering birth rates and in the name of kindness and diversity, we should be asking ourselves what is a society and culture willing to sacrifice of itself to accommodate those it welcomes? And is a kebab stand in every street corner worth sacrificing a country's entire culture? What do you yes. think? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is worth it. Yes. Or a Mexican restaurant. Yes, it's worth it.